Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulf Stream Park. I'm Ron Nicoletti. It is a really beautiful Saturday afternoon. We have 12 races we're going to look at, including the 28th running of the Royal Delta. Let's go to Pete Aiello with those track and weather conditions. 12 races on the program with a carryover in the Super High Five and the Royal Delta as the feature race of the day. Beautiful weather conditions for horse racing, fast main track, and a firm turf. A field of seven to kick off the program on turf at one mile. Starter allowance horses with the off-time favorites, including two, Valley Cove, and three, the man behind the man. Racing at Gulfstream. Out wide, Blakey begins well. There's all go, moving to challenge, and Valley Cove won't be far away. He'll land third. The gray caloric is at the rail ahead of Morocco, then tearing it up. And the man behind the man is three wide at the back of the field under Javier Castellano, chasing the speed of Irat Ortiz Jr. and all go. All go around the turn on top, a length and a quarter. From the outside, Blakey is second. A length and a half clear, Valley Cove, who's getting a ground-saving run of it, third down at the inside. Tearing it up is fourth, then Morocco, who's keen between horses. The man behind the man is three wide. And at the rail, it's Caloric, who's last of all, as the opening quarter was complete in 24 seconds flat. Down the back stretch they go, and with the advantage, it's still all go in front on length and a quarter. On the outside, Blakey is there second, Valley Cove is third, Morocco is wide on the course, but starting to move up a touch with tearing it up just to his inside. They're three and four wide. Back at the inside, that's Valley Cove patiently handled at this stage, two in front of the man behind the man, and the trailer is Caloric. 47 and three for a half mile speed as they leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. All go, comes under pressure, four wide. Morocco gets started right now, Blakey is next. Landeros has been awfully patient on Valley Cove, now he needs to find some place to go. Wide on the course is the man behind the man and Caloric is last as they run to the top of the stretch. Three quarters, 111 and one, and into the drive they run. Up on the outside, Blakey to take on all go. Here's the split for Valley Cove, who's now angled for racing room and charging at the leader. Final eighth of a mile. Blakey has the lead. Valley Cove lifting on the outside with all go toward the rail. 16th to go. Valley Cove trying to nail Blakey. This is going to get close. It's Valley Cove and Blakey. It's a photo finish. Want to say Valley Cove got there, but too tight to be sure. 135 and 4. Jockey Chris Landeros is getting a reputation for being one of the best in the colony over the Gulfstream Park sod, and he proved that reputation well as number two, Valley Cove, perfectly handled the victory up in the shadow of the wire under Chris Landeros for Ian Wilkes and owner Marianne Charleston. Second number seven, Blakey. Third was the five, all go. We move to the second race of the afternoon, six furlongs the journey. Allowance optional claiming horses with a field of seven. These are Florida breads, and the favorites were one, Trev, and three, Northern. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning. From the rail, the veteran Trev fires to the top and Northern moves right with him early and these two fly, working a length and a half better than Silent Tiger in particularity. Tomato Gator is out sprinted today while fourth about five lengths behind, then storming my way and out the back door early is Polar Jet. They speed to the half mile point and the speed is on up front. Trev toward the rail, Northern to the outside. They pass the half mile pole in lockstep and four ahead of Tomato Gator, who tries to rally from third. Outside in particularity, trying to move through traffic is Polar Jet. Silent Tigers at the inside and storming my way is last as they round the far turn. Opening quarter was rock solid, 22 seconds flat toward the outside. Northern now puts a neck on top. Trev asked to quicken by Irat Ortiz Jr. and tries to battle on second. Tomato Gator is third. Polar Jet is fourth as they reach the top of the stretch. Northern on the outside. Trev at the fence. These two throw it down with Northern up for a narrow lead. Tomato Gator is third as Trev is boxing on front second. Final eighth of a mile. Tomato Gator is lifting at Northern. Northern tries to hold it. Tomato Gator is surging. Tomato Gator and Northern. Tomato Gator's got him. Tomato Gator in time. Northern was second. Trev was third in 110 and three. Number one, Trev, and number three, Northern, do too much too soon, and it allows an upsetter to roll by. Number six, Tomato Gator, himself usually a speed horse, comes from off the speed to get the victory. Under excellent handling from Javier Castellano for Panic Stable and trainer Jane Sibeli. Second, number three, Northern. Third was the old man. Number one, Trev, got a slice of the tribe. Time for a commercial break. Don't go away. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards. Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, 
Breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm, breeding the champions of tomorrow. Back now for the third race, seven furlongs to journey, maidens of the special weight variety in a field of seven. Off time favorite included number two, Fort Worth. And they're off. The favorite Fort Worth was last to begin and then checked to last. Not a good start for him at all. Chancelot is now looking for the lead, and Chancelot will land on top. From second, it's Bandon Woods. Now rushing up, here's Fort Worth after the subpar getaway. Third down toward the inside. And way in fourth is Bodie Express. Back to fifth and road home. The two at the back are Deuces are Wild and Soul Seeker. They make their way to the half mile point, and up front it's Chancelot and Jaramillo through an opening quarter of 22 and 1. They lead the way. Fort Worth is sequestered toward the inside as Bandon Woods keeps him bottled up at this point. Three clear of Bodie Express, who's two in front of Road Home, and at the back of the field, Deuces are Wild and Soul Seeker. They round the far turn now, less than three furlongs to go. Chancelot, strong so far, in front by two. Whip out on second, running Fort Worth. Bandon Woods on the outside is right with him. The favorite's working awfully hard to try to gain on Chancelot. Meanwhile, Bodie Express is the one that's gaining from fourth, as Chancelot went 44 and one for a half mile. Three sixteenths to go. Chancelot turns first on top by three and a half. Bodie Express is right with Fort Worth, who's wandering all over the place in a very educational debut. Final an eighth of a mile, Chancelot has the lead. It's Chancelot in front, Bodie Express taking a run at him on the outside, Bodie Express pegging Chancelot, these two, it's Chancelot hanging on. Chancelot went all the way and did it in very fast time. Final time was 122 flat. Put Fort Worth on your list, he'll win it by about 15 next time out. He had a ton of trouble and learned a lot from the effort, but also a horse to put on your list was the winner, number one, Chancelot. Went very fast, sub 45 to a half mile, and held on to win it under Misael Jaramillo. For an ownership group of Alan Michelle Crawford at Gelfenstein Farm and trainer Jorge Navarro. Second number three, Bodie Express, and third was number two, Fort Worth. Move now to the fourth race, the Yanos Family Classic at seven furlongs, maidens of the special weight variety, a field of six. Favorites were one, Smooth with a Kick, and two, Karama. And they're off. Smooth with a Kick missed the start, two and a half lengths. Karama very quick into stride and heads off for the early lead. From the outside, High Road is moving into second. In between horses, take charge again as third. A gap of three to Daring to the outside of Smooth with a Kick and no debut speed from Gotta Flat Haver. Down the back stretch they go, and at nine to five, it's Karama with the money on in front a length and a half. Take charge again is second on the outside. High road is third. Flat with a kick, smooth with a kick rather, is racing from fourth. Three clear of Daring and three more to got a flat haver. 22 and two for the opening quarter speed, and look at Karama fly away. Karama around the far turn bumps the margin to four and a half. Second is take charge again to the outside, and racing third is High Road. Smooth with a kick, we'll have to have some kind of a kick to win from there. A length in front of Daring and two and a half to got a flat haver as they went 45 flat for a half mile. Five sixteenths left to run and Karema still has the lead. She's in front by three and a half. High Road starts to get on track while well, second. Back to third and take charge again. Ridden fourth is smooth with a kick. They move now to the top of the stretch with three sixteenths to get. Karema and Nick Juarez strictly the one to gun down. They lead by three over High Road in second. Back to third and smooth with a kick. Final eighth of a mile, Karema trying to seal the deal. High Road is just up and down in second best to a flashy debut winner by the name of Karema. She wins by three in the end. High Road was second, smooth with a kick third. It's a photo for fourth involving Daring and got a flat haver, 123 flat. Number two, Karama takes a lot of early money, and that was smart money, as she was very impressive in her career unveiling, winning gate to wire under Nick Juarez for Mike Pino and Shadwell Stable. Five, High Road was second ahead of the one, smooth with a kick, who probably wants more ground. She settled for third. To the fifth race now at six and a half furlong, start of the middle pick four. Claimers in for $6,250. A field of nine signed on. Favorite was the two, Duke of Miami. And they're off. 
Good start for Cotton 2 and a good start for One McCase. Duke of Miami being ridden down at the inside. Kokomo Wildcat and Tempter won't be far away as they run down the backstretch. Kokomo Wildcat and many crews come through to take the lead. Cotton 2 is in stride with One McCase second and third. Tempter is fourth for Leonel Reyes, two in front of Nuclear Code, then the Duke of Miami. Three at the back are Bull Roarer, Cyber Josh, and Artist. They go to the half-mile point behind an opening quarter of 22-2. and two. With the advantage, it's still Kokomo Wildcat. Hounded in the two-path by one McCase, three wide and cotton two. Here's the Duke, Duke of Miami, down at the inside, racing to the inside of Tempter, who's going to try to launch an attack, and in the process, box in Duke of Miami. We'll see how it plays out from here. Three furlongs left to go. Kokomo Wildcat held together up front. One McCase on the outside is now second. Duke of Miami is sequestered toward the inside. Out wide and Tempter from the back and Bull Roar. Many chances here, even nuclear code at a nice number. Top of the lane, rail just open for Duke of Miami. Up to take the lead is Tempter. From between horses, it's Bull Roar down the send side and a late run from nuclear code. So now it's Tempter who has the lead. Duke of Miami through at the fence. These two, Tempter, Duke of Miami, outside of nuclear code. Tempter's almost there. It's Tempter in front. Close then for second, Duke of Miami or nuclear code. Bull Roarer ran fourth. Number five, Tempter gets the job done under a nice handling from Leonel Reyes, making a move on the far turn and bottling up the favorite in the process. Costa Bravo, the winning owner of this son of Spites Town for trainer Juan Carlos Avario. Second, number two, Duke of Miami, and third was the sixth, Nuclear Code. We move now to race number six in a mile and an eighth on turf, maidens of the special weight variety, a field of seven, all the money for one, Seismic Wave, and three, Exult. And they're off. Smooth beginning. From the inside, Wild One Forever is a way to take the early lead as Exult moves to challenge. And on his outside, Tiberius Mercurius is now moving into contention. And Tiberius Mercurius is somewhat of a reluctant leader as they back down the speed through the opening quarter mile. Henry's Bend is there second. Irad Ortiz Jr. wanted Exult pocketed up. Now he gets what he wants as he's third down inside. From the outside, and Seismic Wave has moved to fourth in the two path. Three wide fifth is Red Sorrel. The two at the back are Wild One Forever, who broke with the leader and third edition. Opening quarter was 24 and one. As they circle the first turn, here's a move from Henry's Bend and Panici to take the lead. A bit keen and a bit awkward in his action right now is Tiberius Mercurius. He shuffled himself back a touch. He's now racing in second while angling to the flank of the leader. Three wide and seismic wave from third. Down inside, Exult watches the action unfold while three and a half lengths off the lead. Then comes Red Sorrel, two in front of third edition and Wild One Forever is last. The opening half mile was slowed down to 49 and two as they go to the half mile point. With the advantage, it's Henry's Bend in front by length. Tiberius Mercurius is second. Castellano and Seismic Mave destined for a three wide far turn bid. Third on the outside. Down at the inside is Exult. He'll need a way through, but he's got a good trip. Outside in fifth and Red Sorrel. Two back to third edition and then Wild One forever as they run to the top of the stretch. Seismic Wave let go three wide to take the lead on his back Exult. And the two favorites will square off. Red Sorrel stands side after three quarters. And 113 and two, they wheel for home. With the advantage, it's now Seismic Wave, who gets the jump on Exult, who's trying to get to him in the final eighth of a mile. Seismic Wave in front. Exult is lunging on the outside. Seismic Wave, Exult a final push. Seismic Wave, Exult, Seismic Wave wins. Exult is second, third edition is third in 149 and one. Favorites run one, two, and do not disappoint here as number one, Seismic Wave holds on narrowly under Javier Castellano gets his second winner today for Hall of Famer Bill Mott and the Judd Mott Farms. Number three, Exult, is proving to be unlucky in his two races. He fired a big shot and had to settle for second ahead of the five. Third edition, ran third. Time for a commercial break. When we come back, the Rainbow Six sequence. Don't go away.
Back now for race number seven on the program. Start of the Rainbow Six, made in claimers on turf at one mile. They're in for $20,000. Scratch the alternates, 13 through 15. A field of 12. Favorite was the 10, Super Mama. And they're off. Miss Sally Fant off slowly. Anomaly off quickly, but Beach Dreaming has speed from the fence, and Beach Dreaming puts a neck on top. Moving to challenge, that's Alexandra's Joy, and in between horses, Anomaly. The big favorite got a good spot early. Super Mama landed inside while racing fifth. Up on her outside went Crespacula to take fourth. Then it's back to the trio of Mambo Dancer. It's about me between horses and three wide My Temple. Two lengths back to Oh What a Moment, then some Sunfest in the purple silks, about nine lengths off the lead. Two lengths better than Miz in the Cove and Miss Elephant is last. They bend into the backstretch after completing a quarter in 23 and 2. Up front, it's big long shot Alexandra's Joy by 2 over Beach Dreaming, who's on hold second. Anomaly is third. Crespacula is fourth. Super Mama fifth. Up on the outside and now sixth is It's About Me. Then back at the inside, Mambo Dancer two in front of Oh What a Moment. Then comes Sunfest, who's still about nine or ten lengths behind while trying to improve up the inside. Miss Elephant is wide on the course and trying to gain ground, passing two of them. They are My Temple and at the back, the trail there is Miz in the Cove. Around the far turn they go. It's Alexandra's Joy on top. Beach Dreaming has had the perfect trip given the flow of this race. Racing in second off the hip of the leader. Back to third inside is Anomaly. Now Super Mama's in the clear for an opportunity. It's about me on the outside with a quarter of a mile left to go. Beach Dreaming comes away with the lead. Alexandra's Joy is second. Super Mama swung to the center to punch home with an eighth of a mile to go. Beach Dreaming set down by Batista. Super Mama on the outside. And here Here's Super Mama to take on Beach Dreaming. Beach Dreaming inside. Super Mama outside. These two coming clear of the others. Beach Dreaming battles on. It's Beach Dreaming. Beach Dreaming and Jose Bautista had something up the sleeve for Super Mama, and they turned her away in 136 and 3. Jockey Jose Bautista continues to be very underrated, especially on turf. He rides the green stuff very well, and he was a picture-perfect ride here from the daughter of Treasure Beach, number three, Beach Dreaming, who turned away the big favorite, Super Mama, to get the narrow victory. The trainer Jacob Molina and owner Tom Cross to get Jose Bautista on board. Ten, Super Mama second, nine, it's about me, ran third. Time for the eighth race of the afternoon. Six furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for 12,500. A field of 12. The favorite was the two. Stronger Cat. And they're off. Level beginning. Tong Shu from the outside, ridden for the lead. Treasured Info has speed. At the rail in Samoa, moving up in between horses, rolling Bobby out of there. Fourth, now third. Back to fifth is the favorite Stronger Cat, racing ahead of a wide running by Golly Miss Dolly. Princess Dynamite is the gray in the orange colors, about five lengths behind. Then return the favor ahead of Levy Land. Wide on the course is Mia Angelina. Megusta Poppy is between horses. And seven to the trailer, Wicked Mandate. 22 and two for the opening quarter speed. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. In the two path. Here's Rolling Bobby to take on Treasured Info for the top. Stronger Cat is third. She's in the black and white silks only two lengths off the lead while angling for room as Tong Shu can't keep up. Samoa is fifth and Princess Dynamite two in front of My Golly Miss Dolly. She'll be wide as they approach the top of the lane and Stronger Cat might have had enough of this. Stronger Cat now turns for home moving into the lead and moving into the three length margin over Rolling Bobby who's flat to the boards while second. Down the outside Samoa is third but with a final eighth of a mile Stronger Cat bids this field a pleasant Saturday good afternoon. It's Stronger Cat, three to five is easy money as she runs up the score late to win by six. Second rolling Bobby, third Samoa, and fourth was return the favor in 112 and one. Number two, Stronger Cat makes three to five, looks like easy money under Irad Ortiz Jr., Safi Joseph Jr., and Frank Calabrese. Second number six, rolling Bobby, and third was the one, Samoa. We move now to the ninth race of the afternoon. The start of the league pick four on turf at a mile and a 16th. Allowance optional claiming runners on turf here with a field of 12. Scratch the alternates. Jose Bautista rides the one smart shot. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. 
Far outside, Somedy wins the break and is trying to cross over from her outside gate from between horses Southern Sis. Moving out the inside, sometimes a diamond wants some forward position. Up on the outside goes not a Prada price, and the charge past the wire the first time. OKK is taken in hand by Rafael Hernandez to race about three lengths off the lead while a bit wide, not as wide as Nantucket Red, who's four or five deep. Then back at the inside goes Finesse Bore alongside Smart Shot, a gap of another two and a half to Samuna, and then it's a gap of three to Panza Cola, who's last. Top flight horses separated by no more than five lengths in the run to the backstretch, and with the advantage, it's Southern Sis and Miguel Vasquez by ahead. Right back at her second is Somedy, three wide third, not a Prada price, four wide fourth is Nantucket Red. Tucked in off the speed, fool's gold, romantic moment, and sometimes a diamond. Wide on the course is OKK. -K. Then it's a gap of another two to Finesse Bure ahead of Smart Shot, who's two in front of Samuna. Panzacola still last behind a 49 and three half mile. Inside half a mile from home, and with the advantage, it still remains Salmody by a head. Not a Prada Price second, three wide and third is Nantucket Red. Southern Sis is losing her pitch fourth. Fool's gold now starts to catch the eye between horses. She'll need a way out. Trying to keep her in for a while is OKK -K while wide on the course. Two better than Finesse Bure, who runs home. She's only five lengths off the lead for Alvarado. Smart shots on her back and moving to the outside. Many chances here as they wheel in. Three quarters, 113 flat with an eighth of a mile to go. Not a Prada Price up for the lead, but Fool's Gold's in the clear. Here's Fool's Gold to take over the lead. It's the final 16th of a mile. Fool's Gold moving to a two-length lead. Back into second, Southern Sis. She's back running again, but second best to Fool's Gold. Up third, that was Finesse Bure. Closer for fourth, Somedy or not a Prada Price. Nice ride here from jockey Javier Castellano, who's hot-handed here today. He gets his third win of the afternoon for the Chad Brown-trained Fool's Gold. The daughter of Medallia Doro gets the money for Wise Racing. Five Southern Sis with a good try, second ahead of the seven Finesse Bure, ran third. We move to the 10th race now, five furlongs on turf, allowance optional claiming runners, and for 62,500. Field of nine signed on, the favorite was the eight, factor of one. And they're up. From the center, Okinawa begins the best and fires to the top, moving between horses. Here's Sierra Alioni up to challenge for the top. Up on the outside goes Snack Shack. Factor of one away in the top flight. She'll land third. Then back to Samara, who's raced about four lengths off the lead. Two better than Worth Avenue. Unakoi's out wide with Fly. And Volatility Index is last of all as they speed around the far turn. With the advantage, Okinawa and Haramio in front now by a half a length. On the outside, Snack Shack second. Factor of one third. Samara toes into the race nicely. Races from fourth. Up on the outside, and Unakoi tries to find some place to go from the back, and Fly starts to hit her best ride. She's got all kinds of traffic to overcome as they wheel in. Up on the outside, Samara is now onto the front, moves away from a battling on Snack Shack. Factor of one third, Fly down the center. Final eighth of a mile, it's Samara in front. To the attack one more time is Factor of one, and she means business now. Factor of one starts to get ground on Samara, but Samara is hanging out. Factor of one was second, and third was fly. Number one, Samara takes care of business under jockey Nick Juarez and gets the money for Jason Service and owner Michael Dubb. Eight, factor of one, lunge late, but had to settle for second, ahead of the six, fly, who completes a Michael Dubb first and third trifecta ticket. And we'll be right back. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Back now for race number 11, the feature race of the day, the 28th running of the Grade 3 Royal Delta, a one-mile trip over the main track for $150,000 in guaranteed purse money. Field of seven, the favorite was the seven, blamed. Racing in the Royal Delta Stakes. It was a smooth beginning. 
Silver Bay, one of the first to break the line. The favorite blamed is way out in the center, but is beginning toward to go to the front. And down inside, Tecalita has third. Now into second. Back to fourth goes another broad, then outside and Hala Hala. The two at the back, Weekend Mischief and Tulsa Queen. Out of the shoot and on to the main course. The opening quarter goes to blamed. And Irad Ortiz Jr., they're comfortable up front with a length advantage. Silver Bay on the outside of her, door the inside of her, and Tecalita. Opening quarter was 23 and one. Two and a half back to Hala Hala, who races on from fourth ahead of another broad who's fifth and toward the rail and long shots weekend mischief and Tulsa Queen at the back of the field as blamed is in front. It's blamed to the half mile point paving the path with a length to work with. Silver Bay on the outside second. Tecalita sequestered at the rail third. Back to fourth and Hala Hala ahead of another broad. She's lost a bit of ground trying to get underway from the back is weekend mischief with Tulsa Queen through a 45 and three half mile. Less than three eighths of a mile to come. Blamed now gets away to a two length lead. Hala Hala up on the outside for Jaramillo's after the leader second. Back to third, Silver Bay. Tecalita's at a one pace. Another broad is three wide as they move past the quarter mile pole. Three quarters, 109 and three, and they're into the drive. It's Blamed who comes off the turn trying to do it every step. Hala Hala to the attack now. Second, Tecalita's back to third. Final eighth of a mile, Blamed wanders with the lead. Hala Hala second, Tecalita third. 16th to go, Blamed is still there. Blamed is too good. Blamed, geek to wire in the Royal. Delta. Hala Hala second, Tecalita third, then another broad and weekend mischief. Number seven, Blamed, bet down to the favorite for good reason as her speed proves too much for the Royal Delta competition. She gets the graded stakes victory here today. She is a daughter of, you guessed it, Blame. Clever Massey, the winning owner, and how good has Bill Mott been this year? He's got stakes horses all over the place, it seems. He gets another one here with Blamed and Irad Ortiz Jr. on board. To the 12th and final race on turf at one mile. Claimers in for $16,000. Scratch the 3, 7, 13, and 14. Jose Bautista rides the 10, Vigas. The favorites were 6, McKagan, and 8, Flow Motion. And runners away. In the center, the Queen's Jewels gets the first call. Bay Bridge is being sent forward at the fence. On um, three wide, McKagan, four wide, Flow Motion. He's going to tuck in wisely here on our Arad Ortiz Jr. Now he drops him over to the rail to race about three lengths off the lead. 302 Cassie is next toward the fence, followed outside by two step time. Then it's a length and a half to the team of Osby and Vigas. Out wide on the course is Second Street, and it's gap of two to cut to order, who's last of all behind a strung out field led by Bay Bridge. Bay Bridge and Isaac Castillo with the inside edge after a quarter in 23 and two. McKagan on the hip of the leader racing in second, three back to third running the Queen's Jewels. Flow Motion is next toward the rail, two in front of 302 Cassie. Then it's a gap of another half length to two step time, who in turn is four or five lengths in front of Vigas. Osby's not keeping up with cut to order on the outside and trying to move up his second street. 46 and two for a half mile. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn. There goes the veteran McKagan. Now let loose to take the lead. Bay Bridge is back to second. Flow Motion's had a garden trip and he starts to take up the slack third. Running with him fourth is the Queen's Jewels. Four back to a retreating 302 Cassie with a quarter of a mile left to go. McKagan made first run after three quarters in 110 and one. Flow Motion now into the clear to take him on and the two favorites kick on with it. Third is the Queen's Jewels. Fourth outside is 302 Cassie. Cassie, but there goes Flow Motion, and Flow Motion is striding clear. McKagan is all out. He won't hold second as 302 Cassie gets that spot, but Flow Motion is in front. Second is 302 Cassie, third is McKagan, and fourth is the Queen's Jewels in 135 and 1. Number eight, Flow Motion takes advantage of a nice pace scenario and was patiently handled here by Irad Ortiz Jr., who sweeps the late daily double and gives trainer Safi Joseph Jr. his second winner of the day. Frank Calabrese with an owning double, Flow Motion, two to one. Up second was number two, 302 Cassie, ahead of the six, McKagan, who probably moved a bit too soon, had to settle for third. A form for result to the late pick five and rainbow six sequence, so the rainbow six has a carryover as we march forward to Sunday, more than 35 thousand dollars and that wraps up saturday's card what a weekend we have in store for you we got 12 races on sunday and we got a special holiday card president's day card 12 races on monday so lots of racing action for the next few days here at beautiful gulfstream park good night and good luck hit the hay, hit the hay. i've been working all day hit the hay, hit the hay. what do you say Hey, hey, hey. Well, I'm tired. 
Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired. 